and a little later this hour, the latest on Hurricane Dorian. Yes, there is more going on today. Now it is a Category 5 storm. More aimed after the break. Alice loves the scent of gain so much, she wished they came in a fabric softener, too. <clears throat> Say hello to your fairy godmother, Alice. Oh, and look, they've got gain scent beads and dryer sheets, too. It's been a long time since Andy dusted off his dancing shoes. Luckily, Denture Breath will be the least of his worries because he uses Polydent 4-in-1 cleaning system to kill 99.99% .99 of odor-causing bacteria. Polydent, clean, fresh, and confident. Big dreams start with small steps. But dedication can get you there. So just start small. Start saving. Easily set, track, and control your goals right from the Chase mobile app. Do it. You just got to do it. Chase, make more of what's yours. Back then, we checked our smartphones zero times a day. Times change, eyes haven't. That's why there's Occuvite. Screen light, sunlight, longer hours. Eyes today are stressed, but Occuvite has vital nutrients to help protect them. Occuvite, eye nutrition for today. There's nothing small about your business. That's why with Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get tailored product solutions, expert tech advice, and one-on-one -on -one partnership. Call an advisor today at 877-BY-DELL. We trust USA more than any other company out there. They give us excellent customer service every time. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. USA took care of her car rental and getting her car towed. All I had to take care of was making sure that my daughter was OK. If I met another veteran and they were with another insurance company, I would tell them, you need to join USAA because they have better rates and better service. We're the Gomez family. We're the Rivera family. We are the Kirby family, and we are USAA members for life. Get your auto insurance quote today. Why walkers? Because they don't like waiting forever in boring car dealerships. That's why the Davis family went to walkers. Why will you? During the Subaru A Lot to Love event, get a Subaru Outback for just $27,741. And experience walkers Renton Subaru. Get ready, y'all. Caretaker from my mom. I hope my kids do that for me. <laughs> One of them has to care, right? <laughs> I just need a minute. I'm so sorry. I can't talk when I cry. I'm not Rachel McAdams. <laughs> I want to give it up for lighting because I don't look like that. <laughs> Why walkers? Because they don't like waiting forever in boring car dealerships. That's why the Davis family went to walkers. Why will you? During the Subaru A Lot to Love event, get a Subaru Ascent for just $34,220. And experience walkers renting Subaru. Global citizens have the power to stand up for girls and women everywhere. We at MSNBC are global citizens, and we invite you to join us. Download the Global Citizen app and learn how you can power the movement to make sure she is equal. Building gender equality so girls around the world can overcome discrimination. When you do, you'll earn points for tickets to the Global Citizen Festival in New York City. Be a global citizen and power the movement to end poverty. He gets out and starts shooting at us. Um, my husband saw him start shooting at us, and we um, we got onto the median. We saw him coming closer, and like I was looking in the mirror, looking back, and um, I could see him like loading up a gun, and it looked like a long black gun that I saw. And um, I told my husband, he's coming like closer, like we need to get off the like interstate. So my husband got back on the like on the right side of the median, and we got off, and we turned back to the on the service road coming back to Midland, and um, he shot at us again when he passed us. The shooting in Odessa, Texas, comes as Congress prepares to return from recess when it will once again have the opportunity to confront gun violence. In fact, the House Judiciary Committee had planned to come back from summer recess early and meet this Wednesday to discuss laws proposed after the shootings in El Paso and Dayton this month. But it postponed it until next week because of Hurricane Dorian. Join me now with MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner, Mustafa Ali, a former EPA official who has also done work on reducing gun violence, and gun reform advocate 
Naveed Jamali. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Naveed, you're at a disadvantage. I'm going to come to you first because I know that one of the things that you're involved in is a new initiative to try to curb gun violence. Just describe what that is um, for us briefly. Sure. Very quickly, um, you know, we're a group called Left of Bang. It's a, left of Bang is a military term. And look, Joy, what we feel very strongly is that if we're going to actually curb gun violence, that we have to focus on solutions that start long before the first shot is fired. And look, we, we have a very simple proposal that focuses on three points. The first is the idea that if you're going to be a, a firearm owner, you should d demonstrate some proficiency in the use of that firearm, applicable laws, safe storage. You should, there should be firearm licensing. Uh, the second thing is this idea that, you know, the loophole that if I buy a gun today and then I want to give it to someone, I can do so without actually registering that sale, that transaction. You know, the idea that what Washington State has done, that if you sell or give a gun to someone, you need to be able to go through a federally licensed firearm dealer so that that sale is is, is recorded that there's a background check and the last thing joy and this can be done today with congress is there's an atf tip line the f in, in atf firearms we want to make sure that if people see something that they can say something we believe the atf tip line should be better funded so that there is a way that if you see something and you are concerned that there is a place to call and these are the three things that we're very much focused on to really try to, you know, not about gun problems. This was just a gun problem and there was no violence associated with it. We wouldn't be talking about it. We really want to focus on practical ways to really curb gun violence. Um, and those are, those are good solutions, excellent ideas. But, Glenn, the challenge is what's happening is the opposite of that. So Texas is doing the opposite of that. What they're doing is these laws that are set to go into effect actually today include allowing people to carry in church um, to this is the one that has floored me is saying that landlords cannot restrict their tenants from housing lots of guns inside their leased apartments, meaning the exact way a lot of shooters have carried guns to shoot up Walmart or shoot up churches is they had them in their place. And so if you're renting, you can have as many guns in there as you want. The landlord can't stop you, even though it's their property. Having guns in school, being able to throw them in a uh, trunk of your car in front of a school. Um, foster homes, allowing foster homes to store guns and ammunition in the foster home. Uh, carrying during national natural disasters, saying that you can arm up and walk around with your AR if there's a natural disaster, and adding increased defenses for people who at unknowingly enter an establishment that prohibits firearms as long as they leave. So basically you can walk in with an AR, and then as long as they ask you to leave, well, if you are meaning to do wrong, well, you're not going to leave. You've gotten in legally. These don't make sense. No. There's no persuasive argument that more guns make us safer, easier access to guns make us safer. In fact, Joy, I don't think there's a rational argument, never mind a persuasive argument, that more guns make us safer. There are good guys and good gals with guns all over Texas, and look at, we, look at what we have to go through over and over and over again. As a federal prosecutor, I was involved in the investigation into uh, the Navy Yard shooting in 2013. Aaron Alexis, who was a Navy contractor, who goes into a building that is protected, secure, and full of people, good people, with guns, and he kills 13 people. He injures multiple other people, and the good people with guns couldn't get there quickly enough to put a stop to it. More guns is not going to help, and anybody who is being honest about where we are as a country will acknowledge that. What will help? is legislation. How about universal background checks? Legislation passed in February in the House that Mitch McConnell has sat on and wouldn't even send to committee. Joy, I spent 30 years in courtrooms. I never called anybody names, and I'm not going to start now. But when I hear the President of the United States use a term like enemy of the people, usually referring to the press, which we know is hyperbolic hogwash that comes out of his mouth, and his Twitter feed. I think if somebody is thwarting the will of the people, not on substance, but on process, the people deserve to have legislation debated and voted on. And there's one person who is stopping it, and it's anti-democratic. And if you crack a dictionary and could look up a picture of who really is the enemy of the people, it's the person who is thwarting the process designed to address these problems. Well, and the person and the people he worked for. I mean, you worked, um, uh, Mustafa, in, in federal government. You've worked in that sphere. Mm -hmm. You have a president who takes his last call from the head of the NRA and then takes orders 
from him. Mm -hmm. You have Mitch McConnell, who's the head of the Senate, who won't touch any rational legislation on guns, all of which are extremely popular because he's been ordered to by the guy who runs the NRA. We essentially have a president of the United States. It's the guy who's the president of the NRA. Exactly. Uh, we've never had that before. We're an outside entity. A lobby actually is the person that rules this country. Yeah, and you know, I I'm very clear. Mitch McConnell needs to do his job. And here's the reason why. 36,000 people are dying each year from gun violence. 300 people are getting shot every day. 21 kids are getting shot every day. And 97% of the folks across our country say that they are in support of background checks. So evidently, there is a disconnect between what the people are asking for and what Mitch McConnell and the president are doing to move forward. When they talk about arming folks during natural disasters, I remember Katrina, and I remember when those brothers and sisters were trying to go across that bridge and were being stopped. So if we're going to give more people guns and we're going to put them in these highly volatile situations, then we are asking for more people to lose their lives. So they need to do their job or they need to be held accountable. Right, I mean, Dabid, we have these two concurring disasters that are happening uh, at the same time. You have this spate of, of, of white nationalism uh, and violent white nationalism that's happening at the same time that you have even more e easy access to guns and an encouragement of it, at least at the state level and the federal level. So you brief members of Congress. Is there any will that you've been able to detect among, not the Democrats, they obviously want to do something, but it's the Republicans who are saying no. I think, look, uh, listening to what Beto just said in, in your block before this, I think that's exactly right. I think there isn't a will, unfortunately, amongst, might be one privately, but that doesn't amount to anything if they're not willing to do anything publicly. Look, uh, just very quickly, you know, when we join, when you join the military, you're not given a weapon day one. You have to go through a background check. You have to be trained. You have to demonstrate proficiency. In fact, a lot of people might be surprised to learn that the barrier to get a weapon in the military is far harder than it is in the civilian sector. It, it, Th this is a definition of what this country has become, that we have, you know, the access to firearms and the ability to just joy. You know, when the president talks about Chicago, what drives me nuts, and I'm sure Mustafa can, can speak about this too, but, you know, you, all you have to do is drive 20 miles outside of Chicago and buy a weapon which has very strict laws and then come back and sell it in Chicago. You know, right. When they talk about felons, when he says felons, which we know what he's really referring to, felons aren't going to gun manufacturers or going to gun dealers and buying weapons. What they're doing is they're buying it from someone, and the laws are such that once that person legally purchases a weapon, they can give it or sell it to, to anyone, anyone they, they want. want. Very That's right. Mustafa. That's crazy. Your response, Mustafa? He's exactly right. You know, this, this emergency that we currently have going on is one that is man-made. And we are the only ones that can actually make the change. When you look at gun violence that's happening uh, inside of inner cities, we can trace back to where those guns are coming from, from just a few of the manufacturers that are out there, a few of the sellers that are out there. If we got regulations in place, we could minimize some of this. Now, some of the things that are going on in relationships to these mass shootings, there are some additional steps that need to be in place. But we've yeah. got to have the red flag. You You've got to have the background checks. Those are the basics, yeah. and it's a shame that we're only facing the basics. And Glenn, the last, the, la the, the first person that this shooter, who now the uh, the death toll is seven now, seven people, including the sh uh, plus the shooter, seven people plus the shooter are dead. First person he shot was a law enforcement officer. Yeah. Where is law enforcement on demanding? I mean, cop killer bullets were out there at one point. Um, you've got easy access to better firepower than most police have. Why are why are law enforcement agencies not screaming to have better protection. The first person who was killed was, a, as you said, the good guy with the gun was the first to, to be shot. Exactly. And if that good guy with a gun, and I'll tell you, he wasn't by himself. Most likely he was with a partner. So maybe you have two good guys with a gun who can't stop one bad guy with a gun during a traffic stop. And look at where this all ended up. And I'm with Mustafa. Mitch McConnell has to do his job. But you know, the other thing, Joy, for 22 years, I was in the homicide practice right here in Washington, D.C. We had young men and women, generally young men of wi and women of color, killed every week and sometimes every day from a high of 400 murders a year to a low of 86. And even that's too many in a city with a population of about half a million. And you know what? People considered those no profile or low profile cases. So we didn't talk about those right. every day. In our nation's capital, we have kids being killed with guns every day. We shouldn't just focus on it when there's a mass shooting. Absolutely, yeah, and police officers are, are, are afraid of sort of average random black motorists. Mm -hmm. You should be probably a bit more afraid of people who've got weapons of war, who look like warlords walking down the street, walking into Walmart and walking into up and down the street killing people. Uh, very important to have this conversation. Glenn Kirshner, Mustafa Ali, Naveed Jamali, thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Coming up, the latest on Hurricane Dorian.
next American Swamp, here's your second chance. His finances hang over absolutely everything. Watch all four episodes beginning tonight at 9 on MSNBC. You're watching MSNBC. This is Rick Blomquist. His life is pretty comfortable. Then he laid on a Serta and realized his life was only just sort of comfortable. I've been living a lie. The Serta <laughs> iComfort Hybrid Mattress. Not just sort of comfortable, Serta comfortable.